My brothers and sisters, it's a blessing to gather with you to celebrate this Mass. Let us begin in the sign of our faith, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. As we open our hearts before the Lord, let us call to mind our sins, and asking God's forgiveness, let us prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, Grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel at Shechem, summoning their elders, their leaders, their judges, and their officers. When they stood in ranks before the God, Joshua addressed all the people. If it does not please you to serve the Lord, Decide today whom you will serve. The gods of your fathers served beyond the river are the gods of the Amorites in whose country you are now dwelling. As for me and my household, we shall serve the Lord. But the people answered, Far be it for us to forsake the Lord for the service of other gods. For it was the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up 
out of the land of Egypt, out of a state of slavery. He performed those great miracles before our very eyes and protected us along our entire journey and among the peoples through whom we passed. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. The Lord has eyes for the just and ears for their cry. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress, he rescues them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit, he saves. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Many are the troubles of the just one, but out of them all, the Lord delivers him. He watches over all his bones. Not one of them shall be broken. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, live in love as Christ loved us. Husbands, Love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of the water of the word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and to the church. The word of the Lord. Thanks. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Many of Jesus' disciples who were listening said, This saying is hard. Who can accept it? 
Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe, and the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you, that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. Jesus then said to the twelve, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> My brothers and sisters, with this Sunday celebration, we return to our reading from the Bread of Life Discourse, the sixth chapter of the Gospel of John. And today's three readings tie in with a question and a response. The question from God is, where will you go? Will you follow? And the response that he desires and the response that at times we give is, where else would we go? We are here with you. You have led us. We are yours. And then we see it fleshed out in the second reading from the letter of Paul, St. Paul to the Ephesians as he's talking about marital love, love between husbands and wives. And he makes clear that what we celebrate in the Eucharist, what we profess in church, what we say to God, we have to live out in our relationship with each other. It is not enough to say it in prayer. It is not enough to offer pious phrases to the Lord as true as they may be. The true fruitfulness of these words. Okay. My brothers and sisters, we return this Sunday to the Bread of Life discourse. We return to what Jesus offers us as a central teaching of our faith. The fact that God is with us. The fact that God gives us his life. That every time we celebrate the Eucharist, it's not an empty memorial, an empty remembering. It's rather participating in the life of communion that Jesus has offered us. But what the readings this weekend make clear is that to truly be a people of communion, it is not simply enough to go through the gestures. It is not simply enough to say the right words. What matters is what's in the depth of our hearts. And what matters is what happens once we leave church. The readings this weekend time and again have this interplay between God and his people of a question and response. The question from God is, will you follow? Will you listen to what I am saying? Will you be mine? And the response from the people, at least initially, is yes. From St. Peter, we have it beautifully. Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. Deep and profound words that Peter says. And yet we know that not too long a time thereafter, when he is asked, do you know Jesus? Are you one of his followers? Are you part of his group? Three times he denies this Lord that he so beautifully professes to believe in and to follow. It happens in the life of discipleship, that we know the Lord, that we know the right thing to do, that we know what he desires of us, but that it's challenging to put ourselves on the line. The life of discipleship begins in church, but it's lived out as we go forth to the rest of our lives. This is what St. Paul makes clear in today's second reading from the letter to the Ephesians, which speaks so beautifully about the love of husbands and wives. Now you can take this reading, as some do, 
and see it as a reading of subordination, a reading of husbands are here and wives are here. But this is precisely not what Paul is saying. The type of love that Paul is speaking of is a love that God has shown for his people from the beginning of salvation history. It's a complete self-gift. In love, there is no oppression. In love, there is no subjugation. In love, there is freedom. And in love, there is a full giving over to the one we love of everything we have and are. This is what God has done for us. And this is what he asks of us in return, in our relationship with him and our relationship with each other. When we celebrate the Eucharist, we're not usually thinking about this whole dynamic of love. But every time we come and we receive the body of Christ, and the priest or the deacon or the Eucharistic minister says the body of Christ and we respond, Amen. It's precisely all of this that we're saying. We're saying, yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I know this is your body, your blood, your soul, your divinity. Yes, Lord, I know you love me so much, and I thank you for that. And yes, Lord, I will go and live that with others. Who knew that such a short word contains so much truth, but it really contains infinite amounts of that reality. Amen. It literally means, so be it. When God says to us, this is my body, this is my blood, how wonderful is that gift, my brothers and sisters. God has done the giving, it's up to us to receive it. And having received that gift, it's up to us to go and share it with others. What we do when we celebrate the Eucharist is only a beginning. The demands of love are great. The demands of love in married life can be very challenging and stretch us. But being stretched is not a bad thing. It leaves space for growth. It leaves space for God's grace to enter in, to keep perfecting us. Many of Jesus' disciples turned away when he laid out completely the demands of love. It seemed too much that God would love them this much. It probably also seemed too much they were being asked to love in that same way. Fear turned them away because they didn't trust in the capacity of what God had to offer them. The same is being offered to us, my brothers and sisters, in our relationship with God and then fruitfully handed off in our, in our relationships with each other. Do not be afraid. Do not settle for simply going through the gestures in your relationship with God. But rather, when he comes and says to you, I am here, I give you my life, let your amen not only be a confirmation that you have received that life, but rather that you trust him enough to go forth and share that life with others. Let us now together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
I confess on baptism for forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God, let us present him with our prayers. For priests and religious, may the Spirit shield them and strengthen them for the building of God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For nations crushed by debt, that the community of nations help restore them to financial help. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer from illness, may Christ, the divine physician, bring them complete healing and comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life in the Archdiocese of Boston, that more men and women will respond with generosity to the call to serve God in religious vocations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all the baptized may grow in appreciation and love of Christ's gift to us of his real presence in the Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of this Mass, the people of the Catholic parishes of Stoughton, and all those who have died, for the souls in purgatory, for Susan Walsh, may she know the mercy of God in the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all married couples, especially those who find themselves struggling this time, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the prayers and intentions which each of us bring to this Mass in the silence of our hearts, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and merciful God, we thank you and praise you for your many gifts. We ask you to strengthen and to renew our faith, that we may ever give a joyful yes in response to your invitations. We ask you to hear our prayers and to answer them, through Jesus Christ, who is your Son and our Lord, and through the intercession of his blessed Mother. Together we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. My sisters and brothers, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. May you praise the glory of his name, and for our work, for all of his work. 
O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father creator of the world and source of all life for you never forsake the works of your wisdom but by your providence are even now at work in our midst with mighty hand and outstretched arm you led your people israel through the desert now as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world you always accompany her by the power of the holy spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Oh. Holy. So now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was at the he took the chalice, gave you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity. So that together with Francis our Pope, Sean Patrick our Bishop and his assistant bishops, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, 
and may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant all to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. James and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, to await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Just a few announcements before the final blessing. Registrations for religious education are past due, but you can still register and pay for religious education on our website. It is never too early to start shopping for Christmas. You can own your own keepsake ornament of either Immaculate Conception or St. James or both, or delight a friend or family member with this special gift. You can order your Christmas ornaments today. Order forms are available in the parish office and on our website, as well as in church. And now let us pray our collaborative prayer. Almighty and living God, you have called us to be disciples of your Son, Jesus, and to labor building up the church in Stoughton. We ask the intercession of our patron, St. James, and the Blessed Virgin Mary, that through their example, you may teach us to follow you more faithfully each day. But we follow St. James in seeking to follow Jesus wherever he leads us. May we follow Our Lady's instruction to do whatever Jesus tells us. Transform us through your Holy Spirit to be faithful and fruitful stewards of your many gifts. Help us to live lives marked by faithful prayer, service to our neighbor, and generous sharing. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying God by your lives. And have a great week, everybody.